Today's video is sponsored by Tecron, and the truck that you're seeing in today's video is essentially a brand new truck. It's a 2021 Toyota Tacoma, but just because it's brand new doesn't mean preventative maintenance isn't important. And one of the biggest things that I do to all of my vehicles is I use Tecron. Gas, diesel, it doesn't matter. I just use the right Tecron product for the right vehicle to make sure that everything runs exactly as it should. And I don't have any weird deposits that are going to build up in my fuel system. If you're in the market for a high performance fuel additive, make sure you check out Tecron. This week's going to be a big one. We're going to continue on our Tacoma build, and by the end of the week, we need to have 100% of our rear suspension complete. In last week's video, we tackled the front suspension and we installed the Marlin Crawler RCL THD. Most of this kit is bolt-on and required very little welding, but today we are going to be doing some pretty heavy modification. My friends over at Barnes Four Wheel Drive sent us all these brackets and tabs and rod ends and everything we need in order to build a custom rear three-link for the Tacoma. The th a three-link is going to flex way better than the factory leaf springs and we need to lift it and everybody I called for custom leaf springs, we we're looking at close to 2K. Leaf springs are very expensive these days and the uh, everyone is like super pack ordered. So I decided to go coilovers because coilovers are not much more than building a custom three link as long as you, as you know, know what you're doing and you do all the work yourself. So why a three link versus a four link? All those questions are gonna be answered later on in the video. We're gonna go to the whiteboard and we'll talk about what our options are for the Tacoma, but first, I need to clean all the brackets off this axle housing and we need to clean up a whole bunch of stuff on the back of this truck. The first thing I need to tackle is removing all the spring hangers and brackets that I don't need on the frame and then I'm gonna do the same on the axle. Once everything's prepped for future work, I can slowly start to add bracket by bracket, tack it together and then we can do a test fit. So we're doing our first test fit and everything looks like it's gonna clear just fine. So I've got the axle centered where it needs to be. Uh, I pulled 19 inches off the floor to the center of the axle. Half of 38 is 19, super simple, right? This is where I want the truck to be approximately at ride height. I didn't clarify that last week, but that's how I like to set all the chassis is about where I want them at ride height. And so now we're ready to move forward. I'm looking at the test fit. All the brackets that I tacked on look like they're gonna clear. If you're a noob, if you've never done suspension before, I highly recommend um, setting your axle in place first, then tacking all your brackets on because it's gonna be easier for you to visualize with your first suspension where everything is going to come up and down and make sure you're not gonna contact anything. For me, I wanted to not work on my back all day, so I just pulled some measurements frame rail measurements, measurements for these cross members. And then I just took all that information over to the table and I tacked everything in place. And now here we are, it all clears. So we're ready to move on to the next step. Um, actually, before we move on to the next step, let's talk about these bump stops really quick. 
I don't like hydro bumps. We're gonna talk about that in a future video. They just drive me crazy. And this is not gonna be jumping giant dunes in the desert. This is a rock crawler. So I wanted to use a soft rubber bump stop. These Timberin bump stops are perfect. I ordered them before I knew if I was gonna use leaf springs or if I was gonna do a, a three link. We're gonna do a three link, but it's really easy to modify these. So if you're someone with leaf springs, these might work perfect for you, but they're gonna work perfect for us because it's so easy to modify them to work uh, with what we've already got going on. So as you can see, for the, um, for the, basically for the perch that I'm mounting these to, I just kept the same spring perch in place. I didn't cut it off for our, uh, for our leaf springs. And that's because it's located in the perfect spot. And then on the chassis side, we have a strike pad already. So that check that off the list, right? As long as we cycle our suspension here in a little bit, and this contacts our strike pad, I'm going to burn in the feet of that bump stop and boom, bump stops are done. We just saved a ton of time. Now, the next thing we need to do, Speaking of a ton of time, let's talk about something that's gonna take a ton of time. And that is mounting our coilover brackets. If we were building a buggy and we weren't worried about coming up through the bed, I would just zap these in right now. And then I would just order uh, coilovers that are super long and make it work. But what I'd like to do in order to keep everything looking clean is I'm going to trim that up to where it's gonna clear the underside of the bed. We're gonna have to cut out the bed a little bit, but the most important thing to me is that it clears our deck system because then once this is all done and it's got coilovers and everything, people are gonna look back there and it's just gonna look like a deck system. It's, you're not gonna see a bunch of springs hanging out of the bed. I think it's gonna look really nice and clean and plus it's just gonna have a nice flat pro profile on top instead of having coils everywhere. Barn sent over all these brackets and tabs. They sent a few different options for coil towers, but I chose these ones because it tips the coil over away from the frame a little bit, and I don't feel comfortable Frenching this frame. If we have to, we can, but with a C channel, it is just not strong enough, in my opinion, without doing some serious work on the backside to give it a box shape. If after watching this video, you decide that you want to build your own three or four link in the rear of your Tacoma, one thing that I highly recommend you do is research the importance of chassis flex. This chassis specifically flexes a ton because it's C-channel, it's riveted together, so there's just a ton of movement. And if you box too large of a section, you're gonna start to get cracks in your frame over time. You basically need to box all of it or box none of it. But in our case, I'm just gonna box the tiniest section I possibly can in hopes that we can get away with it for this one bracket. This frame side pan hard bar mount is made to go on the outside of a frame because you want to have that link as long as possible, but because of packaging constraints, we have to put it on the inside. So I'm going to trim this up. I'm going to turn it into a reverse style bracket. It's a lot of work, but it's definitely easier to modify this than build my own from scratch. And at the end of the day, this is a very small modification, especially considering the giant upgrade we're going to get out of this rear suspension. 
I know a lot of the people that watch this channel are beginners, and for that reason, I wanna run through the different types of suspension we could have used in the rear, well, link suspension that we could have used in the rear of this truck. So this is what we ended up with right here. We've got a fuel tank, we've got two frame rails, lower control arm, upper control arm, pan hard bar, and then these are just more like frame rails, right? So the reason we don't have a four link and that we did a three link is because of this giant fuel tank right here. It, it would be, if you can package a four link, absolutely do it. If you're someone who does like rock battle, you do a lot of heavy footed throttle and you hop over obstacles a lot, I would not recommend a three link. I would definitely recommend removing that fuel tank or changing its location. For me, I don't wheel that way. This is a low horsepower truck and it goes through an automatic that does not shift very firm. So I'm not concerned about ripping that other link. However, if I do, I'll let you know. Another option we could have used would have been radius arms. And I think this is a very viable setup that a lot of modern wheelers overlook because it does bind at extreme angles, but that binding usually just wears out joints a little bit faster. It's not that big of a deal. I, I've, I've ran multiple vehicles with radius arms and there's a lot of vehicles that come factory with rear radius arms. So this is gonna be way easier to package. Your upper control arms just mount into the lower ones and then you have two mounts on the chassis. You just need some really nice solid mounts on the chassis and then locate a pan hard bar and you're all good to go. Another option would have been this if we would have relocated our, uh, our fuel tank. I'm not willing to do that, but this is the setup that I use on the back of my Jeep and on the back of my Land Rover when I built it. And to me, this is a very viable setup. Or you could do a double triangulated four link. So this is a semi triangulated. The upper triangulation makes it where you can get rid of your pan hard bar, makes it a little bit easier to package if you have the room to do it. We don't. The, this last drawing right here mimics a kit that I have seen for sale. This is not good. This is something that I don't know if the company's around anymore but I've seen this set up on a couple different rear Tacomas and this is not good and I'll tell you why. This is a combination of these two. You don't wanna combine any of these. These are all engineered to work standalone. This is engineered to get rid of a pan hard bar and this is engineered to get rid of an upper link. The problem here is that whenever your axle travels up and down, it's gonna follow an arc because the pan hard bar is gonna make it, it won't just go straight up or straight down. It's gonna follow a slight arc. That slight arc is going to have a big conflict with the upper control arm because this upper control arm is triangulated. If you notice here, we have barely any triangulation. We want like as small a triangulation as we can. We want this to be parallel on these links because we're using a pan hard bar. If this upper link is triangulated, you're gonna get big binding, really big binding between these three joints right here. And what's the problem with big binding? It's gonna burn through your consumable parts a lot faster, like rod ends, like bushings, all that stuff, but probably you're gonna end up ripping off brackets, more than likely. So I would highly recommend staying away from this. The rest of these are completely viable options. And now let's talk about pan hard bars really quick before we go. This is like the pan hard bar setup that we have in here. This is what a lot of people shoot for, is a nice flat pan hard bar. And the reason for that is the front end, you want it to be as flat as possible. You want it to be really similar to your drag link, obviously not applicable to this truck. But the big difference between these two is just gonna be the movement from ride height over. Because what happens is when this travels up or down, the uh, rear axle is gonna move slightly off center one way or another because it's gonna follow the arc of this circle. So if you look right here, this is what we're working with. We're gonna go from center, which is gonna be ride height, if, we, if the axle travels down, because it's gonna follow that arc, it's gonna travel to the passenger. Or if we go from center and the, tra uh, the, the axle travels up, it's gonna be moving uh, driver. The difference is this is basically all the way extreme over to the driver and whenever it's flat. And then if the axle travels up, it goes over to passenger, or if it travels down, it goes over to passenger. I don't know which one's better. There's a lot of argument over which one's better. Personally, I think either one is completely fine if you have packaging constraints. And I know that with a truck that has this long of a wheelbase, 127 inches, I'm definitely not concerned about noticing it at all on the trail. First thing I want to do is burn in the shock towers for the coilovers, but before I can do that, I want to confirm that I don't need to adjust them a little bit here or there. Right now I think they're going to fit just fine, but I want to set the bed over it, I want to trim the bed, 
where I need it, and I want to make sure that these are going to be covered completely by the deck system and not interfere with the drawers. diff cover from Marlin Crawler that is for a smaller rear axle than what I have, but I couldn't find anything that was a direct fit, so I figured I would trim this and manipulate it in any way that I needed to just so I could have a little bit of armor and ensure that our brand new ring and pinion is protected. If you know of a rear diff cover that fits the third gen taco for sure, please put that in the comments. I didn't find any, so I just modified this diff cover from uh, Marlin, and it's not pretty, but it's absolutely going to protect us from the rocks, and that's all I, that's, I like form over, sorry, function over form nine times out of ten, and that's definitely what this is for. We're out of time on this axle. It's dinner time. This video goes live tomorrow, and tonight before I leave the shop, I... <laughs> I have to have 100% of this done and painted so I can install it all in the truck tomorrow. I have a super tight deadline to get this, uh, this truck to the King of the Hammers in less than two weeks. So we're gonna skip a step. I put this universal truss here because this is gonna be the basis for some webbing to make an axle truss from scratch. I don't have the time to engineer that, so we're just gonna skip that step, unfortunately. If you're an overlander, I highly, highly recommend you trust the rear axle on these Tacomas because all overlanding setups with all that crazy stuff in the bed, they all go overweight. And the cargo capacity is not a suggestion. Um, it's something that we should all follow. We're all guilty of going over it, but the consequences are things like bent axles. And yes, people are bending the rear axles and third gen Tacomas like crazy for that exact reason. Just they're too heavy. So you either need to get a stronger axle or you need to truss it. In our case, I calculated out, we're gonna be like 400 to 450 pounds with like all my recovery gear, spare tire, everything in the bed. I don't think that we're gonna be over our payload capacity and we should be just fine. So that said, it's time to weld all this up. I do have two more little doodads we're gonna add and I wanted to talk about these because I know for sure I'm gonna get questions about them. If you're like me and you like the trailer, Having a way to just quickly connect your strap is a game changer. I have uh, not, not these exact brackets like they make from, these are from Barnes, but I have something similar to this on my TJ and it is a breeze to, cause once you weld it on, you just, whatever you get on the trailer, just snap, 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 and then ratchet everything down and you're good to go. You're not trying to wrap over brake lines or any other stuff. So right now I'm gonna tack these on. We're gonna finish weld all this stuff and then I need to start painting so I can install this tomorrow. It sucks doing this much work on a truck like this and not being able to see it bear fruit yet, but hang in there. Here in the next two weeks, we're gonna be able to actually drive this. We're gonna see what all these suspension mods have done to the truck, and you'll find out alongside me if it was all worth it.